Kathy. I'm Jen. And I'm Chris. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today we're going to share with you an exciting project we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. You can see it right behind us. And it's going to really help us get some seeds started this spring. This handy guy over here has been working hard on it and just got it finished a few days ago. And now we already have some seeds germinating on it, so that's pretty exciting. At the end of this video, we're going to also give you a quick breakdown on how much this unit costs so you can have an idea on if this is something that's reasonable for you and your family. We had two different goals. So one was functionality. We really wanted it to be super functional and be able to provide a nice setup for a lot of different seeds. The other thing is we wanted it to look good. We have kind of a modern farmhouse decor going on in our home and we wanted to stick with that decor as much as possible. And we wanted something that stood out a little bit and provided us with multi-purpose functionality all year long. So the nice thing about the seed starting setup that we put together is we can just take off the grow lights and it just turns into a really pretty bookshelf or other shelving unit. In addition to this video, we do have a detailed blog post available that I will link in the description below. And there will also be links provided for all of the items that we purchased for this seed starting setup. So Chris is going to talk to you about what he did. He's going to talk to you a little bit about the grow lights and why he chose what he did. And just share his little mini tutorial with you guys. I've always liked black pipe furniture and so I had the idea that we would make this permanently installed shelf to have in our space that would be something that we would enjoy um, being around. You know there's a lot of options where we have spaces we could use like in the basement and things like that with uh, set with semi-permanent shelving but it just wanted to work out as nicely. So to start, I basically, I had to lay out approximately what the dimensions of the wall were. So there's a lot of standard um, pipe measurements that you can buy online. And so I wanted to be able to leave enough spacing between the shelves to allow for uh, seed growth and allow to leave proper spacing for the, the shop lights as our seeds got taller. I ended up settling on 18 inch spacing between each of the shelves. So each of the pipe pieces that creates the vertical portion of the shelf is 18 inches long. Using uh, basically an assortment of T's, floor flanges, and straight lengths of pipe, I assembled a structure that was able to rest on the floor and then also attach to the wall to give it support. I went ahead and, and basically did a dry fit of all of those pieces and then placed them against the wall to ensure that they fit appropriately. After that, um, I went ahead and so I used mineral spirits to remove all the grease that comes on the pipe. They are shipped with a grease on them to prevent them from rusting. And so I used that uh, to wipe down the grease. Going to get it painted. And then I spray painted them with a black spray paint to make the color nice and consistent and to prevent against future rusting. After we painted the pipe structure, we placed them back up against the wall, lined them up and leveled them vertically in the way that we wanted. And then I went ahead and drilled pilot holes where all of the floor flanges connected to the wall. I used wall anchors to provide enough support in the drywall so that the shelf wouldn't pull back out of the wall with any kind of uh, weight on it. So once we did that, we put the shelf back up against the wall, we mm -hmm. drove screws through the wall, um, and basically that was it. We had the structure built and it was onto the shelves. So with the measurements trying to fit between these two windows, he went ahead and made his cuts, you sanded it down. Yep. We used 1 by 12 dimensional lumber because that allowed us to have the proper space to be able to fit a full size seed starting tray on top of the shelf and uh, we only used about a three foot spacing between the black pipe sections because we didn't want that one by 12 board to bow in the middle. We wanted to make sure it was stiff enough. Once I made the cuts and got everything sanded down, um, I applied three coats of polyurethane. Um, I ended up using a roller, which actually, actually worked out pretty well. I was uh, just kind of a bit of an experiment on my end. Once the polyurethane was dried and all cured after 24 hours, I went ahead and installed the shelves on the pipe frame 
I used a uh, little half inch um, galvanized pipe straps to, and I spray painted those black, and I used those to connect the actual shelves to the black pipe frame so that it wouldn't move around or, or slide around at all. And then, David. So, moving on to the shop lights. I did a lot of research into the shop lights, and unfortunately there's not really a lot of great resources or consensus out there as to what the appropriate way route to go is. I really wanted to use LED lights because these are gonna be running uh, most times 16 hours a day, so they're gonna be using a lot of electricity when we're running four lamps all at once. So I really wanted to minimize our energy use as well as the heat output so that our seedlings didn't get too warm mm -hmm. as we were growing. Yeah. Um, and there's a, unfortunately there's a, a lot of really cheap LED Chinese uh, made fixtures on Amazon and there's not a, great, a lot of great information on them. So I kind of settled on the tried and true shop light method which people have been doing you know, for a long time with regular fluorescent fixtures. So I just went with the LED route with that. Mm -hmm. And I settled on a cool white color temperature fixture. So in case you're curious where we got these from, these are LED shop lights from Costco that go on sale pretty regularly. And so these are rated at 4000 Kelvin, which is the color temperature rating, um, which is a, a classified as a cool white rating. So what I found out is that a bluer light, which is what a cooler light is, is typically best for starting seeds, whereas the redder end of the spectrum is more ideal for actual fruit production on a plant. And there's a lot of high-end fluorescent grow light fixtures out there which will have a, a higher color temperature, so I've seen more in the range of like 6500K or Kelvin. Um, but yeah, they run a lot more pricey, they use more electricity, and they don't last as long. So for me, it came down to what we might not have as ideal of a growing setup, it's more cost effective, it'll last us a long time, and if we want to upgrade these lights in the future, we can always repurpose these shop lights for something else around our property. The other thing I wanted to mention is at the moment we do not have um, heat mats on this setup, but we could very easily add heat mats to it um, if we need it. I might get one for peppers, but if you are doing it in the basement or you're doing it in an environment that doesn't have good heat, you're definitely going to need some heating mats for things like peppers, uh, maybe tomatoes and eggplant, things that really like the soil to be really warm. Last year was such a good year and I I did such a horrible job and things were still very resilient. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm excited to be going into this year with a lot, a lot more knowledge, a lot more experience and to give my plants the best start I can. If you guys are at all curious about how we control the lights and set a schedule for them running 16 hours a day, um, I'm a big fan of home automation and so we have a smart home system where we uh, basically have a smart plug that the light, the main light is plugged into and then it controls the rest of the lights. And it's set for a schedule to run from 6 a.m. I think to 10 p.m. So we're doing 16. Is that, that's not 16 hours, right? 14 is what we wanted. Yeah. So that's set for this. So that's set to run for about 14 hours a day. There's a lot of different options out there for you guys, which are uh, becoming a lot easier to get. There's a lot of standalone smart plug options, which we can provide links below if you guys would be interested in that. The only other question I have for you is, how much do you think this costs? The black pipe typically is pretty expensive. I found one website which was a good source of black pipe at a significantly discounted price from the typical Home Depot or Lowe's pricing. So overall, I think all in um, price for just the shelf itself was probably around $250. I did get the shop lights on sale for $20 a piece, so that added another $80 to the total. So all in, we were probably around $330. Yeah, so it's not like your cheap, like, let's get something ready to go for spring option but for us we prefer to you know invest money and do something that's really quality and going to last a really long time and provide multi-purpose functionality all year long and instead of something that might be like 40 or 50 dollars i mean you probably spend like 150 to get all of your lights to, and to get like a cheap shelving unit but that's not going to last as long, it's not going to be as nice to look at, and you might not want to have that in your home for people to see all year long. Yeah. So it just depends on what you're looking for and your goals, and we just wanted to provide this option for folks that also might want to do something similar in their homes. Yeah. And you could spend like $500 to $1,000 on like a pre-fabricated grow light system shelving unit thing that looks great, but it's going to be really pricey. So you can do that if you don't want to do any work yourself. 
yeah, the specialty grow lights themselves are easily five times the cost of the LED yeah, shop lights. We, we would have spent so, like $500 on lights yeah. just for this. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks guys. We hope. hope you enjoyed seeing this project. How do you start your seeds in your home? Do you use your basement? Do you use a room? Do you have a greenhouse? I'd love to hear about what you're currently using and what you think about this idea. Um, please let us know in the comments below. We, we can't wait to hear from you. Yeah. We look forward to sharing our next video with you guys. Thanks. Ooh. Almost spilled it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.